Hello, everyone, and welcome to OHSC Interviews. I'm Vasu Bardwaj, and I'm your host for today's episode. Today, I'm happy to have with me the MP for Mignatik Lereab and the Deputy House Leader of the Official Opposition, Luke Batov. Luke, how are you? I'm good. And you? Good. Uh, I'm excited to do this interview, and I also want to kind of um, give a congratulation since you are the first uh, sitting Quebec MP that we're interviewing. Oh, it's an honor for me, and thank you for uh, having invited me. Yeah, well, we'll definitely open many new perspectives and um, the issues and like um, problems that Quebec your constituents may have and um, your solutions and generally um, the questions that are answered. So. Before we start the interview, we usually ask all of our guests, how did you get started into politics? Oh, it's a, it's a long story, uh, but I'll, I'll try to make it shorter for you because <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't have all the, all the night. Um, for, first of all, I, I was a journalist uh, at the beginning in my uh, writing. So I was a chief editor of my local newspaper and I decided to try to not only uh, report on the news, but be part of the news. I wanted to be part of the development of my communities, and I want to, to take an active role. So I was uh, kind of tired of just uh, re reporting everything that was done in my area. So I decided to, uh, to run in 1998 uh, as uh, MNA member for the National Assembly in Quebec. I lost. Uh, and after that, uh, I wasn't able to go back to my, my previous job as chief because my boss didn't want to, <laughs> me to, to do it again. So uh, what I decided is uh, to uh, get involved in the Quebec Liberal Party at that moment. Uh, and uh, I've done I think almost every job that is possible to uh, have in a political party, uh, from uh, political attaché to uh, chief of communication at the end when I, le when I left. Uh, I, I was chief of staff for the transport minister, uh, press attaché for another minister, so I did almost everything. Uh, after that, after a few years, I've decided to come back in my town in Tetford Mines because that was in Quebec and I have a, my my, my uh, lovely family here in Tetford Mines. I've decided to come back to my town. Uh, the only political job, full-time job uh, we have uh, in Tetford Mines is the mayor of Tetford Mines. So I run for the mayor uh, of Tetford Mines. I won. I've been... I, I was mayor for seven years, and after that, I decided to try the private sector for some time, but uh, soon the political, the politics uh, just uh, called me back, and I uh, decided to run again as a conservative uh, in 2015. So this is my, the, the long story that I, I, I made it, uh, but I made it really, really, really short. <laughs> I mean, once you get started in the politics that... Uh political blood is always in you. You always want to kind of come back. You always want to um, fight for the issues that you believe in. And to be honest, a few months ago, we had uh, MP Michelle Ferrari on the show, and she had a very similar story about how she kind of first started advocating for the community, right? Talking about the things that affected the community, news articles, things like that, and then uh, kind of transitioning into a role to represent constituents and to help solve those problems and talk about those problems in Ottawa. So yeah. I really want to thank you for your time today and thank you for joining us. Without a further ado, let's hop into our question and answer segment. Perfect. So we're going to start off the interview with this. And these questions are asked by members of our high school team. And the first one comes from Raggy in Etobicoke North. It's a well-known fact that if you want to win a federal election as a party in Canada, you must appeal to GTA residents and Quebec residents. Uh, what do you think, sorry, what do you believe the Conservative Party needs to do in order to appeal to more voters in Quebec? That's a huge question. If we had none the, the answer before, we would have been in government right now. So <laughs> we, tried, we tried a lot of things uh, to uh, have more seats in Quebec. We tried to have a special uh, 
plan for Quebecers at the last election. Uh, Ibn O'Toole did a really great job as uh, presenting a plan for Quebec. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that didn't work. Uh, we were trying a lot of things uh, for the two previous campaign in Quebec. And uh, now we 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 have decided that uh, we we just realized that we cannot uh, have a campaign that will only uh, show some Quebec's issues because the issues that all Canadians all around the countries are facing are the same that the Quebecers are facing. So uh, what we want to do is to uh, show that uh, our conservatives' answers will help. Uh, not only uh, us in our right, conservative writing, but every citizen in every writing in uh, Quebec. So um, be proud of being conservative, conservative uh, being proud of saying it and uh, demonstrate to people that being a conservative could be the answer to the uh, economic crisis we are facing right now to the uh, uh, the 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 way that the government, the liberal government, is handling the government with uh, spending, uh, spending, wasteful spend, spending, uh, all, all those things that we we had enough, we have enough. Of, uh, I think a lot of Quebecers are on the same page. So we will talk conservatives to Quebecers, and we will probably gain more people. We will attract more people for the next campaign with that I mean, kind of change of tone. Yeah, for sure, 100%. I mean, it's not only in Quebec, but Pierre Polyev, as the new leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, has sparked a movement across Canada, resonating with many people across Canada. And I mean, out of the 338 ridings in his leadership race, he won 330 of them, showing strong support in each and every single one of them. And if we can translate that into an, a general election, as the polls have been suggesting, the Conservative Party is ahead by a far margin, showing about 36% support among Canadians. So whatever whatever Pierre is doing, it's working and it's presenting real solutions. So I'm, we're excited to see what happens and uh, the potential of uh, Polyev government in the future. Never forget that a poll is a picture of a moment. So we need to continue to uh, work hard to uh, to attract more people to uh, make that movement that we had into our home a conservative mov movement uh, a, a real Canadian one so we have to uh, talk about the uh, the vision of Pierre Poliev we have to uh, present Pierre Poliev to Quebecers we have to talk to them and uh, I think that uh, we we could attract more and more and more voters, but we have we still have a lot of work to do. So we need everyone to continue working and talking about uh, what we will uh, try to do to help this country uh, succeed better and give back hope for Canadians. For sure. So I want to move on to our next question, and this comes from Hayden in York Simcoe, and he wants to ask you. What does your daily schedule look like as an, as an NP and as a deputy house leader? Oh, it's a, it's always busy. Uh, I have kind of two schedules, the schedule in the constituency and the schedules on the hill. So on the hill, we uh, are all the time on meeting and uh, on in the house uh, to, uh, to prepare our speech, to prepare committees. So uh, at the beginning, we have a meeting with the house leader to see what will happen during the day. Uh, we talk about uh, some strategies, some uh, some strategy that the liberals or the NDP could uh, just surprise us with uh, during the day. So we try to anticipate what will be the day. And after that, we have a meeting with the leadership team. The leadership team include uh, the house leader, the whip, uh, the uh, committee uh, responsible, the de de deputy whip, the question period manager, and of course, the leaders and his team. So each and every day we are meeting, we're discussing uh, different topics, different issues. Uh, we are discussing the uh, what will happen during question period. And uh, after that, uh, we are going each, each and everyone on our way to prepare what we have been uh, saying and what we uh, discussed about. 
After that, uh, the, the question period team is preparing the, uh, the order of questions that we will have during the day. During this time, the leader is preparing his own question. So uh, we are just uh, looking for the best question of the day. So we are sending the topic and we are discussing the topic with the MPs and uh, we have to uh, settle it for at maybe noon at, at, the, at the least moment. And after that, we uh, reunite all the MPs who will, who will ask questions during QP. We uh, practice, because yes, uh, best question is uh, practice one. So don't, don't think that uh, you are doing it only at school. Uh, we are doing it as an MP too. And after that, we're going to question period, uh, try to do our best to have answers uh, from the government. But there, here's the fact. This is a question period, not an answer period. So don't ex don't expect too much answer during a question period on the hill. And after that, uh, we are just continuing our, our day. We're preparing uh, our position on the uh, on each and every bill. Uh, we are preparing speech, and uh, we also uh, monitor the committees meeting. Uh, we need. We, we just realized that we cannot uh, have a campaign that will only uh, show some Quebec's issues because the issues that ca all Canadians all around the countries are facing are the same that the Quebecers are facing. So uh, what we want to do is to uh, show that uh, our conservatives' answers will help uh, not only uh, us in our right, conservative writing, but every citizen in every writing in uh, Quebec. So um, be proud of being conservative, conservative uh, being proud of saying it and uh, demonstrate to people that being a conservative could be the answer to the uh, economic crisis we are facing right now to be sure that every committee is doing well, that every uh, a lot of members are there, that our narrative uh, on each and every topics, our lines, our share, and that we can uh, handle um, each and every topic well. And at the end, it all of those uh, things that we are doing are for uh, holding the uh, Trudeau government to account. So uh, this is kind of a day uh, for for a normal day. Uh, for uh, we have a different day on the Wednesday on the Wednesday because we have a caucus meeting uh, on the Wednesday morning. So bef the the caucus meeting is at uh, nine thirty, but each and every region has um, a regional caucus before. So uh, at eight o'clock, uh, we are meeting with our regional colleagues. So we have a, caucus, a Quebec caucus meeting each and every uh, Wednesday morning. And after that, we're going to the national caucus. At, after that, we're starting back for the question period, et cetera, et cetera. And between, uh, in between all of that, uh, we meet with constituents. Uh, we meet with uh, some stakeholders because we want to share, we want to know what they are thinking about our position. So uh, this, is, this is kind of the life of the, of the MP in the house when you are on the leadership team and uh, and the, and in the position like the deputy house leader. Yeah, I mean, uh, you said something a little bit earlier, how there's a, there may be a surprise with the NDP and the liberals. Just touch on that, there's a surprise every day, whether it's wasteful spending, a new ethics violation, whether it's uh, some wasteful or taking away the freedom of uh, Canadians hunting rights. There's always some type of surprise, something hidden with the Trudeau government. And um, it's it's sad to see what Canada has really turned into in the past few years under their leadership. And um, it's good to see that the Conservative Party is holding them to account and they're not uh, just into full-blown chaos. No, we're, we're not. We're, we're really united uh, trying to hold the, uh, the government, the Trudeau governments to account because they are... They, they, they're, I don't want to say they are destroying the party, the, this country, but they are really definitely hurting the, this country really, really hard. And uh, we need to fix it. 
uh, because everything is broken. I, I must tell you that uh, in our writing, our, in our constituency office, um, they are so busy trying to fix each and every part of this government misfunction. Uh, we are um, doing a lot of immigration case, uh, ESDC case, uh, insurance. Uh, I don't know how to say that, uh, but you, you know what I mean. So yeah. each and every thing that they are touching, they are breaking it. And unfortunately, it's the uh, members of parliament from each and every par part of this country. No matter if you are liberals or NDP or uh, conservative, you have to fix what the government is, is breaking. <laughs> because we are the last chance for a lot of citizens to, to fix it. So we are looking forward to a change in the way that the government is uh, Need that not right now. Yeah. So speaking of changes, I want to move on to our next question. And this comes from Vincent uh, from Oakville, North Burlington. And he wants to ask you, in what ways has the Conservative Party of Canada changed since the leadership of Pierre Polyev? Uh, Vincent, he says, this is a good, a good question. Uh, the Conservative Party is still the Conservative Party. Uh, we have not changed. Uh, we have a new leader, uh, and now we have a goal, is to uh, beat the Trudeau government in the next election. So uh, our, our main goal is to, with our conservative principles, with our conservative values, uh, to, uh, to stay united and to work and to focus on one goal, is to fix this country. And the only way to do it is to uh, defeat Justin Trudeau in the next election. Pierre Poliev uh, is uh, the one who is leading the charge and he's doing re really well. Uh, you know, when, uh, though, when I was uh, deputy leader of the party, um, we tried during the leadership race to keep the team united on the Hill, uh, on the, con the, conservative, the conservative members, uh, had to be and to stay united and we have succeed but we had only one goal during this time it, it was to have a new leader now that we have a new leader uh, a new leader was elected with a uh, big and strong support like you have just said uh, all across the country we have a goal that it, that is the next election so we are preparing ourselves we are preparing the party uh, we are working really hard to achieve that goal. And with the leadership of Pierre Pollier, because he, he, he has a lot of leadership in our team, he's really hands on everything. So uh, we have a really, really true hope that that will happen. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see the work he's doing. And it's, um, to be honest, it's... Um... I don't know the exact word to describe it, but it, I'm so happy to see that finally the Conservative Party is on the right track, right? Where you, the caucus is united, the Canadians, many Canadians are united uh, and are resonating with the message of Pierre Polyev. People who have never supported the Conservative Party of Canada before are now coming and buying memberships because of Pierre Polyev's message, right? So yeah. it's great to see that people are getting behind his message. People are getting behind the Conservative Party of Canada. So I want to move on to our fourth question. And this comes from Tippy Talk in Windsor West. And he wants to ask you, with the Alberta Sovereignty Act, many Quebec citizens and government officials have applauded them for it. Do you think other provinces such as Quebec will follow suit? And if so, could this cause problems with the future Polyev government? You know, um... I, I don't think I don't think we have uh, we, we we will face that kind of problem with the policy of government because who created all this mess is the Justin Trudeau government is uh, divide he is dividing people uh, putting people one against the other uh we saw that a lot of time he never accept responsibility for his mistakes and uh he turned he, he, he turned his back 
to uh, Albertans uh, with energy. He, he's just uh, the divider in chief. We are not dividers. Uh, we will respect the autonomy of each and every provinces. We will uh, respect their autonomy. And I think that is the main difference. We are in this because of Justin Trudeau ending of the Federation. And we need to stop it. So no, I don't think that we'll pursue with another, uh, with a conservative government because uh, premiers will know that we will respect them and people in each and every province will know it. Unfortunately, uh, Justin Trudeau caused a lot of damage right now. So we will try to uh, and work hard to keep this uh, country united and not, uh, not, not with those kind of uh, division politics that the Justin Trudeau just uh, put forward since 2015. For sure. And uh, you make a very important point there, how Justin Trudeau never takes accountability for his own actions. And if a leader can't take accountability for his own actions, how can he put his uh, his interests, sorry, the country's interests above his own when, uh, when like, as he is the commander in chief, he is the prime minister. How can he put constituents, how can he put the uh, citizens of Canada's beliefs uh, above his own, right? So- yeah it's uh it's definitely sad to see and all we can do is hope for a poly of government yeah and we need to restore confidence uh in the go the federal government uh because a lot of provinces and a lot of people have lost confidence in the federal government and i can understand it because like i said before everything is broken right now in the federal government uh it's not the uh, employees for fault it's it's kind of because the lack of leadership and uh, no one is taking responsibility for all the mistakes. Uh, we talk about the uh, arrive can hat. We talk about the uh, passport issues. We talk about airport. We are talking about all those things that normally it's kind of the general uh, duty of the day. <laughs> and uh, the federal government can't handle it anymore. So I, 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 I'm... I have hope because uh, Pierre Polyev is, uh, is a leader and we, we are feeling it in uh, the caucus. So I'm uh, looking forward that Canadians will uh, see it and uh, they will feel the same way as we feel we are feeling it right now in the caucus. Yeah. So we'll be moving on to our final segment called Advice for the Next Generation, where uh, we will be talking about youth involvement in politics and more. So I want to ask you, what should young high school conservative students do in order to get more politically active? And what is one piece of advice you'd like to give them? Uh, just, uh, just get involved in your community. Like be, be, be a person who can't who, who do something for your communities. Because MP, I, I start my, my political career uh, because I want to, to be more involved. And I chose the uh, Conservative Party because it was the uh, vehicle that, in my uh, opinion, suit better for me to achieve my goal, to help my community. We're here to serve. So if you, are, if you want to do politics to serve you, to have power, you're not in the right place. Do politics to serve your people, to serve your neighbor, to serve around you, and start by serving. And after that, talk and think about how you can do it in politics. I think it's the best advice I can give to any people who wants to get involved in politics. Politics is not it's, it's, politics is the way to serve better and to have tools to serve better. But at the end, it's all about service. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think Trudeau may have the serving your constituents and the power thing mixed up. I think uh, he has it reversed. Uh, he, he's in it for the power, huh? <laughs> uh, we, we, we can feel it. We, we can feel when someone is here to, uh, to serve himself or herself. We, we, people will feel it. People will finally discover it because you can't hide it. And uh, if you are there for the good reason, uh, you you will never be ashamed to face any constituent, any citizen 
because you know that you are doing your job and you are doing as best as you can. So uh, I think that, yeah, don't, 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 don't be someone who, who tried to serve it, to serve himself in politics. That never, that's never good. And that will lead you to become a liberal. <laughs> so um, I think that about wraps it up. So thank you, Luke, for your time today. We really appreciate you being here with us and we wish you well in the future. Thank you so much, Raju, and thank you for uh, having me on this. Uh, I'm very proud to have been the first Quebecers inviting in your program. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.